Look at us, we are all dressed fancy for today's episode. How you doing, my gorgeous friends on the internet? In this episode, we're going to take a look at some hover effects done in JavaScript. You know how we have our cursor? We don't want that. We want something stylish and good looking. Get out of here. Get out of here. And before we get going, I want to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. I cannot say that seriously. I'm joking. There's no sponsor. Well, we have this Wi-Fi symbol. Wow, look at all the colors. It's like a rainbow. Hello there. Okay, let's get started. So what we're going to do is just open up our editor. And here I just have three files and I have a picture, just a random picture because I want to show you something cool with this as well. So I just linked a font here and just the JavaScript and the style.css, which are just empty. I just added the font size here and here it's empty again. Poppins. Okay. So what we're going to do is just add something in here just so we can try out the effect. Um, so what we're going to do is just create a simple nav. So let me go here and just say nav. And then we're going to give this a h1 dev ed, dev weed. Okay. And a ul, I'm going to call this nav links like this. And in here, I'm just going to create a few allies home, contact, and, and services. Perfect. And above the nav, I'm also going to create just an empty div that's going to be called cursor like this. Okay. And just finally, I'm going to drop in an image down here. So I'm just going to create another section for this section like this. And here I'm going to add, let's just add some text or yeah, let's just add something in here. I'm going to create a div with a class of front cover. I'm just going to drop in this image that I have. Okay. After this, let's go outside of this div. I'm just going to create another class of front cover and this is front description. Okay, so here just something random. Wowie. And down here it's gonna be what you doing, homeboy? Okay, that's it. So we have some content on our screen that we can mess around with. Before we get going, let's open this up in live server. Okay, let me copy that, paste it in here so you can see. This is what we have so far. Okay, let's minimize this. Now what we're going to do is kind of style this up a bit so it doesn't look that terrible. So let's go to style.css. In here, I'm just going to create a super short nav. So let's do display flex, justify content space between. I have a few tutorials on this if you're interested in more in depth how to make this look nice. But we're just going to kind of breeze through it. So we're just going to add a min height, a line item center and margin auto like that. Okay. So basically we add the width of 90 margin auto kind of brings it closer like this. So it gives some extra space there. And now what we're going to do is just display this flex and then we should be good. So what we're going to do is do a nav links. We're going to say display flex. All right, so as you can see, that's display flex. Uh, let's do justify content space between like that. And finally, list style none. Now this doesn't work because we don't have a width to this. So let's kind of add equal, equal widths to devet and the list right there. So to do that, very simple. All you have to do is say nav ul or nav links like that and also grab the h1 in there and just add flex one that's going to give equal widths to both of them so there we go now it looks very nice okay so what i want to do next is kind of just mess around with the cursor that we added in here which doesn't really have anything so this is going to kind of simulate our mouse so let's just get the cursor and i'm just going to give a width to this so let's do something like 3 rem and the height is going to be 3 rem like that. Give it a border of 2 pixels solid black. Okay, so there it is up there in the corner. Okay, next up what I want to do is add a border radius. And if I add 50%, it's going to make it nice and round. 
Okay, next up, what I want to do is say transform. Actually, no, not yet. Let's add a position absolute to this because what we're going to do is through JavaScript, we're going to modify the top and bottom position of this. All right. So for now, I'm not going to add anything here because we're going to let the mouse add the top and the left uh, position for it. Okay, do we need anything else? Let's kind of make this in JavaScript right now and then we're gonna come back and see if everything works fine. So again, this is gonna be, it's not that difficult to make this, uh, but it's pretty cool. So in here, what we're gonna do is just get the mouse cursor and set this equal to document dot query selector. And we're gonna get that mouse. So add the dot right there, cursor like that and the mouse. Okay, so that's the first thing we're gonna need. We're also gonna need the nav links. So let's get that document.query selector. Let's do all because we wanna get all the links. Let's do nav links li like this. Okay, so take a look. We can grab the window and just add an event listener on this. We can say mouse move. So whenever our mouse moves, we can run a function. I'm gonna call this cursor. Okay, so down here we can create function cursor and we're gonna have access to something called E, which is the event. And in here, if we console log the E, you're gonna see that we can get back nothing. Oh, there we go, it's hidden. Why are you hidden? There we go. Uh, we're gonna get back this mouse event and this mouse event has a bunch of crap on it. <laughs> Uh, but the ones we're gonna use is, um, we're gonna use, what are we gonna use? I cannot find it. Page X, here we go, page X and page Y. And this is gonna give us the exact coordinate of where our mouse position is. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the mouse cursor dot style dot top. All right, we're gonna access the top and we're gonna set it to e dot page y. And we're gonna have to add a plus pixels like this to it. And we're gonna do the same thing, dot style dot left to the horizontal one. So page x plus pixels, save. Take a look. All right, so this works. Now there's a little problem here. As you can see, that's not exactly on top. So to fix that, we can go back to style.css here and we can just add a transform, translate, minus 50, minus 50. And that should fix it. Does it fix it? Yes, it does. So there we go. Now it's perfectly on top. Now the problem is, if I go on top of this home, I cannot select it anymore because Basically, we have another layer, another div, because this is a div, this cursor thing, on top. So it makes it unselectable. So to make things selectable, what we're gonna do is come here and say pointer events. We're gonna say none. Save. And not there. Let's go back here. You're gonna see now that we can still kind of pass this through, because this is kind of just stylistic choice. Right? We don't kind of, we don't really want to do anything to it. We still want to be able to click the buttons and everything below it. Okay, so now that's done. Uh, let's mess around and animate this. So let's go back here to app.js. And what we're gonna do is kind of loop over those nav links. I'm gonna say nav links dot for each link. I'm gonna run a function in here, all right? So just add an arrow function. Don't add the quotes here, like that. So basically we're looping over every link that we have on the page and for each link we wanna see when the user mouse is over it and when the mouse leaves. And based on that, we're gonna add a class and remove a class. So on the link, we're gonna say add event listener and we're gonna say mouse over like this. So we're gonna run a function again in here. So basically what we wanna do is uh, on the mouse cursor, we wanna say class list, add, and we're gonna create something called link row. 
like that. So let's go back here and create the link row. All we have to do is just say link grow and we're gonna say transform scale this up by two. And also I'm gonna change the background to black, save. So let's take a look if this works and there we go, it works. Now the problem is once I hover off, it still remains like that. So what we need to do is kind of remove it when we are not on top of it anymore. So to remove it, we're gonna just copy everything from up here down here and we're gonna just change this to mouse leave. So whenever our mouse leaves the link, then we're just gonna remove this. Oh, actually, you know, whatever, remove. We'll add the remove and add after, it's fine. So now, boom, 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 boom. Perfect, so that's what I wanna see. Now we need to transition this because it looks awful. Um, so to transition this, we have to go back to style.css and on the cursor, now here's the interesting part. If I just add, let's do this, transition, all 0 0.3 seconds, ease, save. Here's the problem. You're gonna see that, uh, all right, well, the transform kind of animates as well. It has a transition as well till it catches up to my cursor, but we don't want that. This works but I don't want this to transition. I just want the background and the scale to transition. So here's a cool trick. You can add transition all to everything. You can add transition all to everything, but then modify the things that you want. So I can just say transition property. And with this, I can just explicitly say what I want to be animated. So background, background like this and comma, Transform. So basically you are overriding this all property and you're just adding the ones that you want to animate. So now we're not gonna get that weird motion with this. So boom, it stays on top, but when I hover over it, perfect. So it animates. Now let's add a bit of padding to this Li <clears throat> because we have to be right on top of it. And I, I, I don't like that. So let's find the Li. Uh, Navlinks, where is you Li? Why you do this? Why can I not find you? Okay, let's just go here. Navlinks, Li, and just add a padding of one rem. Okay, does that make it better? Yeah, it's a bit better now. Now there's another pl problem. Problem is when we hover, as you can see, it doesn't really scale where it is supposed to scale. So it kind of goes down like that. I want it to be perfectly on top. So whenever I'm in the middle of this, I want the bubble to be around it as well. So to fix that, all you need to do is kind of mess around with the transform origin. So what we need to do is come here and say transform origin, which is right here. And we can set this to 100% on the left and right and 100% up and down. So now you're gonna see that nothing really modifies itself. It doesn't go down, it doesn't go up. It kind of stays where it's supposed to stay. Okay, now next step is to kind of just change the text to white. So we can make a new class here called hovered link. And we can just say color white. You can do more to it, I just kept it simple. And back here, we can get the link that we're hovering over. Link.classList.add. Actually remove, because we have the removes here. Remove. And we can do, I forgot, <laughs> hovered link. My brain is dead. Save. And here, we can just remove it. Add it. Oh my God. Okay. Let's calm down everybody. We need to focus. Okay, so it changes to white, but this kind of blocks it. So what's the deal with that? The problem is that we need to add Z index to this. So cursor 
let's add a z index of minus one. Hit save, so now it's behind it. Hey, there we go. So now we have that cool effect. If you also wanna get rid of the cursor, you can just go to, to, to the body, you can say cursor none. Okay, there we go, so now we have this. Take a look at that cool effect. Wowee. Another cool thing that you can do is mess around with the image. So you're not limited to only these things. You can also, let me show you something cool that you can do to the image. So let's go, let's go down here. I'm just gonna add it right now. Where is it? Front, let's get the front cover image. And basically, as you can see, this one kind of goes behind it again. So to fix that, all you need to do is add a position relative. Hit save, and also let's put it behind. So I'm gonna say Z index minus three. Okay, so now it's this one's on top. Here's another, another cool property that you can do. You can go up to the cursor and you can say uh, backdrop filter and you can add grayscale like this and hit save take a look now when we hover over it basically that turns to grayscale so whatever is behind it now this only works as you can see it works on images boom take a look at that so maybe what you can do is when you hover over the image you can also add that in JavaScript if you want this gets even bigger and then you have this kind of awesome filter that's happening behind. So basically this doesn't apply on the cursor, it applies to whatever is behind the cursor, this backdrop filter. Uh, because you probably used filter before and that just applies it on top, backdrop applies it to whatever is behind. So maybe you can do blur, let's do blur, three pixels, hit save. So take a look when we hover here, boom, it blurs it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, just something you can mess around with. I thought it was fun. Uh, maybe you can add it to this, but this is kind of the one I wanted to show you because I saw a lot of websites use it. I'm like, I wanna be fancy too, and I wanna do it. So this is how you do it. Okay, I'll see you in another world. Peace, homeboys. Okay, that's weird. Let's move on. All right, so that's gonna be it for today's episode. Thank you so much for being here with me and watching. Uh, at the end of the month, I'm gonna start working on the JavaScript course, which is gonna be very exciting, but very difficult because there are so many awesome courses on JavaScript. So we're gonna have to be unique and special. Um, so that's coming up very, very soon. I'm, I'm mostly doing game development right now and Blender and stuff like that because that's gonna come after I finish these JavaScript courses, Node and React or Vue or whatever. So after all the web development stuff, I wanna get really good at it so I can make tutorials on that subject as well. So I'm not really doing much web development right now. So very exciting stuff coming up on the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure to hit that on the flow, smack that. that, that's another song for another day. All right, everybody, have a good night. It's morning.